interested in EB1A or EB2AW green card, but you are unsure of what is the approval and denial rates in these green card categories, let's talk about that. Hi, my name is Oscar, and as you know, I'm a scientist, not a lawyer. In this channel, we cover those green cards in which you can self-petition, and that means that you don't need to have a company sponsoring you, a company backing you up with a job offer, and also you can do it without a lawyer, saving lots and lots of money. In today's video, we're going to focus on a particular topic, which is the approval rates. Every quarter, USCIS releases official data that we take and we analyze so we can present it to you here in these videos and also in our websites. And actually, today I'm going to show you a little bit of those websites because for this quarter, we actually provided a few nice plots and tables that you can interact with to find the data that you want to find. But let's start with today's topic, approval rates for quarter three. And as I said, this comes from USCIS approvals. We do this every quarter, really. Um, we take all that data from USCIS and come here and report it to you. We also provide a link so you can actually go and do all of this by yourself if you don't want to trust the way we do it. If you want to see previous data, here on screen you have the thumbnail for our previous video. Today we're going to cover the quarter three data, and we're going to look also at the top 10 and actually top 25 countries in terms of the number of I-140 approvals that they received in that period and how that changed over the recent quarters, the more or less the last two years. So stay until the end of the video if you want to see that kind of data, and I'll also show you how you can access that data in our websites. First of all, as usual, just that disclaimer that all this data is publicly available. You can go to the link that I'm going to leave in the description of, of this video, which is this link that you have here, and you will be able to open an Excel file with all the numbers that you see here and all the data also by country. The way we calculate approval in terms of percentage of approval, uh, it needs to be done through a little bit of a calculation because USAS doesn't report it directly. So what we do is we take the number of approvals for that quarter and we divide by the sum of approval and denial um, in that quarter and multiply that times 100 to get the percentage. Okay, that being said, I said that in every video. I think you're tired of, of listening to that. Um, let's start taking a look at data. First of all, percentage approval by quarter. That's what we have in this graph that you have in front of you. In green, we have EB2NAW. In blue, we have EB1A. And I'm right now I'm covering the latest data. We're going to uncover it in a second. But what we have been seeing is that generally the approval rate for EB2NAW has been higher than for EB1A. And that makes sense because EB2NAW is supposedly an easier category than EB1A. But that trend started to be reverted or, or modified uh, towards the end of fiscal year 2023, where actually the two lines touched each other, basically. And, and that was an interesting phenomenon that I already commented here a couple of times. Then that gap was starting to build up again. But if we uncover the data for quarter three, the latest data, we see that not only they meet again those two lines, but actually for the first time since we are reporting this data to you, EB2NAW is now crossing and lower in terms of approval rates than EB1A. And like I said, this situation is not at all expected because EB1A for extraordinary ability applicants is higher in terms of standards that you need to meet. I have experience in both of those categories. I have seen dozens of petitions in, in these areas, and I can tell you that, yeah, UCIS not only has higher requirements, but they are also stricter when it comes to judging these cases. So the explanation that I have here is that the demand over the last year, year and a half, has been really, really strong in both of these categories, but especially between AW. And probably what is happening is that weaker cases are being submitted in the EB2NAW category compared to EB1A. So probably the people that submit EB1A cases are people with stronger, stronger profiles. I mean, stronger, even taking into account the higher standard, meaning these cases are 
better put together. These qualifications are very, very solid. And that probably creates this um, disparity between the expected data and the actual data that we see. Because again, for the first time uh, pretty much ever, the numbers for EV2 and AW are lower. That means that denial rates are higher for EV2 and AW. And now we are seeing an approval rate of slightly below 70%. I think we're talking about 68% for EV2 and AW and around 70% for EV1A. And just to give you a sense of these numbers, if we take the average over this period of time, the average approval rate for EV2 and AW would be higher than 80%. And the average for EV1A would be about 74-75% over this period of time. So you can see how for both categories we are lower than the average, but that is particularly true for EV2 and AW where we're seeing really, really, really low approval rates. Okay. So again, my take is um, cases that are not prepared properly, maybe people that are not qualified enough for either category that go for EB2 and AW because it's more accessible and we end up with these uh, low numbers. Then let's talk about demand. Uh, here in this graph, you can see the number of cases approved plus denied in each quarter. And like I said, after the end of fiscal year 2022, the demand exploded for EB2 and AW, but also increased for EB1A quite a bit. And we uh, have been seeing for EB2 and AW that we have more than 10,000 cases of I-140 submitted each quarter. And what we are going to see now when we cover the data for quarter three is that for the first time, the demand for EB2 and AW is going down and it is below now those 10,000 cases. For EB1A, we see a slight decrease as well, not so pronounced, but we are seeing a moderation on the interest that these categories are having. The opinion that I can have here, well, is centered around the um, longer wait times for Visa Bulletin. We have been discussing Visa Bulletin in this channel every month, uh, pretty much. And we have been seeing that those uh, wait times have been increasing uh, steadily, slowly but steadily over the last year, year and a half. And that is particularly true for EV2 and AW compared to EV1A, where the situation is way better, also because it is a higher standard to meet. So that coupled with the fact that now the process is getting more expensive, may be leading to some people thinking twice um, before submitting a case, investing the time and the money to submit a case. That is my opinion. Of course, you may have a different one and drop it in the comments so we can read. Why do you think that there is less demand now uh, for the first time in a long time? Also, we have to take this with a grain of salt. This is data for one quarter and we like to see trends here, not only uh, single data points. So we have, we have to wait until the next quarter is released, the last quarter of fiscal year 2024. We are going to see that in about three months and let's see what we find there. Okay, soon we are going to take a look at each country individually. But before that, let's talk about our websites. If you are interested in EV1A or EV2AW, we have these two websites. Well, for EV2AW, we have three, actually, depending on the language you speak. But those websites are excellent for people like you who want to apply in a do-it-yourself fashion without depending on other people, without depending on a company. We have a lot of resources there to train you on how to do things. And among all the resources, what I recommend is that you check out our online courses. Here on screen, you have the course curriculum for the EB2 and AW course. We have 10 modules full of exclusive video lectures where we teach you how to put together each of the documents that you need to succeed at this process. You can submit questions in each lesson. And once a month, we meet in a live call where you can ask me directly the questions that you may have. So my question to you now is, what are you waiting for? Join us in the EB2 and AW or EB1A online course. Let's talk about countries, specific countries in each of these two categories. If we talk about EB1A, China and India maintain their first and second positions respectively. China saw a decrease from 1,074 approvals in quarter two to 953 in quarter three, a decrease of about 120 cases. India saw a decrease from 617 to 560 approvals, a decrease of 
57 cases. Brazil remained in the third position with no change in the number of approvals. Nigeria moved up from the fifth to the fourth place with an increase in approvals from 93 to 107. And let's go with EB20AW now. In EB20AW, China and India maintained their first and second positions as well with slight changes in the number of approvals. For China, for example, the number of approvals decreased slightly from more or less 1,500 in quarter two to 1,387 in quarter three, a reduction of 147 cases. India kept its second position with an increase in approvals from 998 in the previous quarter to over 1,000 in quarter three, an addition of 64 cases. Nigeria moved down by one rank from third to fourth with a significant decrease in approvals from 668 to 441 in quarter three, a reduction of more than 200 cases. But the largest change in the number of NIW approvals between quarter two and three was for Brazil. The number of approvals for Brazil decreased by 391 cases, dropping from 802 approvals in quarter two to 411 approvals in quarter three. Despite this significant reduction, Brazil actually moved up in the rankings from fourth to third position. Other countries like Iran, South Korea, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Colombia or Venezuela maintained their relative positions, although the number of approvals changed slightly, usually losing numbers. So what do you think about all these numbers and about the different uh, positions that each country has in this table? If you want to know more about each country specifically, what we have done is we have put all this data in our websites. You can go to any of our websites and you will find this article on the first page. Click on it and you will access these interactive graphs where you can actually take a deeper dive into the data. If you want to see data for each country, we have a table here and you can actually type, for example, Portugal and you will find the number of approvals for this particular quarter, okay? But if you want to see quarters beyond quarter three of fiscal year 24, we also have this graph where you can track the 25 top countries by number of approvals in the EB2NAW or EB1 category, depending on which website you are on, so you can see what has been happening. You can even click on certain countries to remove them or add them from the plot so you can focus on those that you are most interested. And remember that this, uh, these are just general numbers. These numbers don't mean that this is your actual chance of success, your probability of success at EB20W or EB1A. Because the probability of your success depends on different factors. For example, what is your profile? Is it strong? Is it weak? Do you really qualify or not? What is your proposed endeavor if we are talking about EB2 and AW specifically? What plans do you have for the US and are those plans important for the nation? Do you have a good petition package? Have you crafted good documents to support all the evidence? So the quality of that also plays a big role. And external factors, for example, who is the officer who is reviewing your case? Okay, do you have any other ideas of what can play a role in the success of your case? then drop them in the comments below. And of course, if you're not sure if you qualify or not, we have videos in this channel to guide you through that kind of stuff. I will leave a link here for a video on how to qualify for the eb 2 aw category so you can evaluate your profile and understand if you are right for this kind of category or if you need to do some profile building and keep working on your profile until you, you are able to succeed in this quest of putting together a successful green card petition. So let me know in the comments what you think about the numbers we have seen today. What are your thoughts for the future? Is the demand um, continuing to decrease from here on? Is this just a one-off where we just uh, seen an outlier and then it's going back up? What do you think about the approval rates? Did you think they were higher, lower? Take a look at the numbers and come back and comment here. And Thank you, as usual, for being on the other side. Thank you for liking the video, subscribing, sharing with others, and I will see you in the next video here in this channel.